In this video, I'm going to show you how I'm building double barn doors for my DIY backyard shed. This is a 12 by 16 shed that uh, my wife and I built. If you want to see the complete build, I'm putting together a uh, playlist. I'm also going to link that particular playlist in the description of this video so that you can quickly go to that and sort through and see what video you may want to watch if you have interest in looking at those. But in this video I'm going to talk specifically about building the doors. I've got a 62 inch wide by 80 inch tall door opening in the front of the shed and the way I wanted to put this together is uh, with double barn doors. So most of the time I'll probably just be accessing the shed via the right side door which is not installed yet. I'm going to show you exactly how I build that door and then when uh, when I have a larger item I can open the double doors or just need more light inside the shed I can open them both up and, and it opens up really a, a, a quite a big opening in the side of the shed. As you can see I've already got the left door installed and that's the door that's going to be fixed the majority of the time. The doors are basically going to be just splitting that that opening in half but there will be about a half inch overlap in the center so that when the uh, right door is closed it butts up against the edge of the left door so there's no uh, you know it doesn't push inside so let's go over to the uh, other area where I'm working on the doors and I'll show you how I put the door together they're they're pretty heavy doors but they're very very strong and rigid so I don't get warpage or sagging or anything like that and I'll show you how I put them together So this is what my frame looks like once I've got it screwed together with my DIY pocket holes and a little bit of glue on each seam. I just like to glue everything on these doors. It may not be necessary, but... And it comes out pretty straight and square if you've got square cuts on the ends of your 2x4s. But I checked it with the square and it's in pretty good order. The next thing is I've got my, my uh, smart siding panel cut and it's one half of an inch wider than the width of this panel uh, of this frame so the critical measurement I'm just going to be gluing and screwing it down with about an inch and a half screws and some tight bond premium wood glue all the way around and then uh, I'll put a screw on one corner after I get that half inch overlap measurement and I'll do the same at the other end, tweak the frame if necessary to make it square, and then screw the whole thing. I'm going to put screws about every six inches or so, six to eight inches. I'm not going to measure it, I'm just going to put them in. And then that'll get the smart siding put onto this side of the frame. This next step is gluing the back on the door and this is what really gives it its strength, prevents sagging, twisting and warping of the doors. It does add some weight so I'm using 3 8 inch thick plywood. You can use kind of pretty much any type of uh, sheeting, sheathing material but that's what I decided to use and it's going to get put on just like we did on the colored or the uh, the textured board for the outside just going to be glued and screwed all the way around every six to eight inches and then left here on a flat area to dry and then you're going to have a very stout strong twist proof door
So the next step on these DIY shed doors for my DIY shed built with simple tools is going to be adding the exterior trim. Now this textured panel that will be facing outward, I've pre-painted that since I have two tones. I've got that color, kind of a light sandy color, and then the, uh, the white trim, and I've pre-painted the white trim as well. Now what I'm using for trim is not your typical trim. I'm using one inch by four inch furring strips, which is probably the lowest quality wood you can purchase. But if you uh, are patient with it and you do a good job selecting it, it makes decent trim. I put two coats of white paint on it and I'm just going to use the uh, nail gun with two and three quarter inch galvanized nails. And I'm just going to go around the perimeter with, with a coat of paint. I'm going to use the white, which is my trim color, just to seal it from any moisture that may blow in from a, from a rainstorm with wind or whatever. And then I think I'm also going to do a coat of paint around the inside frame. Once I got all the trim on and edges of the doors, each door painted, I got them installed on the shed opening. And I used some heavy duty six inch gate hinges. And they, I think they look pretty darn good. Let me show you up close and show you some details of the inside. And here you can see I used on the inside of the uh, door a one by two furring strip screwed to the inside of the door frame to give it support. Here you can see the bottom and the floor and the opening and how that all worked out. And then both at the top and the bottom, I put one of these barrel latches, or I'm not sure what they're called, but I put one of these latches in order to secure the left door so it stays closed most of the time and I can have it fixed in the closed position until I'm ready to open it up, get something large in or out of the shed. And you can see at the bottom and the top where I fabricated this, it's about 1 8 inch steel plate for that pin to go through in the floor. It gives a good solid fixture for that locking pin to go down into. So that's how I made the DIY barn doors or shed doors for my new shed. In my next video, or I'll put a link in the description of this video if you're interested, I'll show you how I'm going to make a locking bar instead of a door latch for these shed doors. I'm gonna make that locking bar from scratch, just from some scrap metal and show you how I'm gonna do all that. Anyway, thanks for watching how to make DIY storage shed doors and we'll see you on the next video.